How's it going everyone? This is Than from Tidal Gardens and I am here to talk about fish. Now the subject of picking fish for an aquarium is a really big topic that I could literally spend several videos on. So the scope of this video is going to be narrowed to the discussion of fish in the context of an aquaculture system. So the sorts of things that I would look for in a fish for aquaculture are completely different than what I would look for in a display tank. For displays, it's all about finding cool and interesting fish with bright colors. It's very aesthetically focused in my selection process. However, all of those factors go out when I'm choosing for a coral farm. Instead of aesthetics, I'm going to be looking for utility. So in other words, these fish have specific jobs to do. Before I get into the fish that provide utility, let's first talk about some fish to avoid. So what you see here is a grouper. By itself, this guy doesn't do a lot of damage. Groupers do not eat coral or anything, but what they do is prevent introduction of fish and vertebrates that could provide that utility. So I'm using groupers here as an example of any large predator fish that could also include large wrasses, marine betas, or sharks for you crazies out there, whatever. The next fish you do not want to be adding are large angels. These guys will literally eat a trust fund worth of corals. It's a shame because they're very pretty. While not as destructive as large angels, dwarf angels can also get nibbly on corals. Sometimes they'll behave for years in a reef tank and then suddenly, trust fund. Butterfly fish are probably something worth avoiding altogether. There are some that are reef safe and some that can actually provide utility, such as copper band butterflies that eat Aptasia, which is a common pest anemone. enemy. Still, many butterflies are coral nibblers and some are what's called obligate coralivores, meaning that they only eat corals to survive. Now that we've covered fish not to get, Let's talk about the first of three jobs I'm looking for the fish to do, namely algae control. My favorite all-time fish for this job is the fox face. It is hands down the best at controlling all sorts of macroalgae and turf algae, including the really difficult invasive species like red turf and bubble algae or valonia. No fish is perfect, however, and the fox face does have its drawbacks. The major problem is that there are venomous. Their top dorsal spine can sting you, and from what I understand, it's like a bad bee sting. I mean, it's not as bad as a lionfish, but it's certainly not something that you want to experience. The other problem is that there's prettier close cousins to the typical yellow and black fox face, such as the orange spot rabbit fish, and this magnificent fox face that you see here. They're every bit the algae eater that the standard fox face is, but many of these prettier species eat coral, so they should probably be avoided. No conversation about herbivorous fish would be complete without talking about tangs. Without a doubt, they are great algae control. However, not all tangs are really created equal. These are zebrasoma tangs, and they do a somewhat decent job. They're not quite as good as a fox face, but sailfin tangs, for example, come fairly close. Nasotangs and tangs from the genus Acantherus are not quite as effective, and blue hippo tangs are practically useless for algae control. In my opinion, the best complement to a fox face that mows down macroalgae is a tang from the genus Stenochetus. These are the bristle tooth tangs, and they differ from all other tangs in that they rasp at the surface of rocks. So what they're doing is a great job of dealing with film algae. So in this regard, they're kind of similar to a snail. Lastly, I want to talk about a cool interaction that I've noticed that's pretty common amongst the fox faces and tangs in, in my facility. Usually tangs can get a little chippy and harass fish that have similar body types to themselves, especially other tangs. So for whatever reason, they tend to not only leave fox faces alone, they actually pair up to some degree and they swim together in formation. If you've got a substrate, I'm sure you've had to deal with it looking a little brown and crummy as like diatoms and algaes sometimes grow. 
I like my sand pearly white, so over the years we've tried a number of different sand sifting fish, and hands down the champion is the orange spot diamond goby. No other fish does the kind of job that they do. No matter the size of the tank, a single goby can keep the entire sand bed clean. I mean, a single one inch fish can easily keep a 300 gallon tank clean. They're remarkably productive, and they're actually quite tame. Over time, you can practically hand feed them. No fish is perfect though, and the orange spot gobies are no exception. They jump. They jump a lot, in fact. So if you don't want fish jerky on your floor, make sure your tank is well covered. Lastly, there's a type of job for fish that not too many people think of, but it's actually helped our operation quite a bit. We call it critter control, and what we mean by critters are all manner of copepods, worms, and other little inverts that pop up in a reef tank. Now the vast majority of them are actually quite beneficial to tritivores. They eat uneaten food and they help actually process waste in these systems. Some, however, are not quite so helpful and can actually cause corals to stop growing. So we found that by adding a small predator, such as a six-line wrasse and a mandarin in each tank, actually helps keep those populations in check. So that in short is what we look for in fish. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments or on my Facebook wall if you want to see more fish videos like this.